Hi everyone, this is Phyllis Y. Whitley, and if you have been spiritually victimized or traumatized, welcome to Spiritology Live, where I bring my number one Amazon bestseller book to life. Each episode will be a raw, spiritual, metaphysical, holistic space of consciousness for self-healing as you learn how to break your religious shackles so you can master and manifest your promised land then. Let's go. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Or should I say welcome back to me? I am back. Summer vacation. A lot of change. Changes all around me. Physically and spiritually. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right into my title. This episode would be episode 55. I do ask those of you who have been with me or maybe you haven't been with me. You don't know me. I suggest that you go back into some of the episodes dealing with your mind, body, and soul. I guarantee it will help you. I get testimonies on top of testimonies on top of testimonies. So with that being said, I believe we went into, it was a couple stuff that we went into with my last podcast and the one before that uh, really was, I think I ended in the beginning of the summer. Today, we are going to continue something because I get a lot of requests about relationships. I deal with relationships of your body, mind, and soul. That can be mental, spiritual, and all of that really has an effect on your outer relationships. Family, loved ones, husband, wife, all that, boyfriend, girlfriend. So what we're going to talk about today is, are you stuck between doors? That's the the hallway. Before I go into that, I want to immediately say to you, you probably said, well, Miss P, what did I have to do with relationships? It had everything to do with relationships. You know, when you had a breakup, yes, a breakup with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and you just can't get the anger, the regret, meant the hatred, or I mean, you're just boiling inside the way that person might have done you. In the past, and I'm 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 in the, I'm saying the past because you carry that, and then most of you or some of you have came to me and said, "Why can't I go in the future? Why am I still here?" And I will tell you, something had probably happened to you or somebody you know 20, 30 years ago. It could be your mother or your aunt or your grandmother, and they go back to when something happened to them in a relationship, and that had determined what type of things are coming out of their their speech pattern. Is their speech pattern going to be good news, gospel, or is it going to be all bad news? And this is where you have to close your ears. And I had another podcast where you have to consider the source. I talked about that, where you get in your information. You want to know what avenue are they on? I mean, do they have space? Do they have a big Broadway play? Do they have a play? If not, it may be somebody who is hanging around the corner, have dreams and never done anything. So that is in my past a podcast. You definitely want to look at that. Let's go back to the hallway. Well, is other ways, other names for it. Hallways, Hallway can be the entrance, it can be the concourse, it can be the waiting room, it can be the corridor, it can be the walkway, the floor, foyer, the lobby, or the entryway. Whatever you want to call it, go ahead and call it that. But that entrance uh, hallway can be, it can be large or small, depending upon how your conscious is, where your mind consciousness is, where your state of mind. Is that because it can also get crowded because majority of people are stuck and fear comes in trying to go to the future because 
you don't want to because of it triggers something that had triggered something that happened in your past. What I'm saying here is a lot of people that are in the graveyard, they're not really there, but was buried there, their fossils and bones. Their dreams are in the graveyard, and I spoke about this before. Those people actually never made it to the door in front of them. So you're going to learn a lot in this segment. First of all, you know the different names, okay? What is it? It's being stuck between the outer and the interior parts of something. You understand what I'm saying? It is a connection from and to. It's where people wait. Remember the waiting room? It's the wait room. People get stuck there. You understand? And if you can't have an, you don't have an example, see an example, um, I can give you some. It's just like to get from one room in your house to another, you got to go through. Some of y'all have a little hallway. Some of you have a long hallway. Or when you go to church uh, to go in, you know how they say the overflow, you can't make it in because they are uh have a you, they don't have any more seats so they have you uh stand in the foyer so the lobby they they may call it that and that lobby can be crowded with everybody trying to get in so what's happening with that that hallway can be good and bad con and pro- pros one of the things is in that hallway what is going on in that hallway it can be like-minded people that literally that you meet divine connection that is going to usher you in. Or I like to say sometimes people who have made it literally come back in the hallway and bring people. When you meet somebody and they they have been where you was, you literally don't need to go to the bottom of the well. But you you heard people say, you know, they help you help them out. You help them misdirect them. Now you're going the wrong direction. Let's go over here. And that's why you should have a good spiritual counselor because the spiritual counselor can see more than a regular counselor. They just deal with the physical. But no, we are talking about the spiritual because you say, well, Miss P, I don't see any hallway no, you don't, because we are talking about the spiritual realm. You can feel it. Now, the bad part is, is when you go ahead in that hallway and you meet the enemies of life. And it's not all, I'm not talking about hocus pocus. I'm talking about doubt, delay, distraction, all of this stuff. And, and that can come through somebody. You know, the, the family member or the so-called best friend that is telling you, what is the purpose of you going and trying to complete a skill? Why do you want to go and finish your MBA? Why do you want to go to the PhD, finish your PhD? These are people literally that is it's the distraction within you, but it's going to manifest in the voice of somebody close to you. Are you confused? Please go back and listen to my old podcast and you understand. So to make it plain, in that hallway, it can be very dangerous if you stay there long. What I'm saying is, you are between two doors. And you. some of you who have been following me know what I'm getting about to say. What's the name of those doors? I want you to see the door behind you is called past, and the door in front of you is future. And yes, we talked about the two thieves. That was on Jesus' side. Jesus represent the present, the now. That's why I talk about going to your promised land. Really, was it really is the presence, the present of God in you? You understand? I want you to digest that a little bit. With that saying, a lot of people have came to me about relationship. You know, I tell them you can you can just feel and you can get you can sense. Do you really want a relationship? Because JoJo is not off of you. Moniker is still on you if you're a male. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because 
You can't get to that future. I have heard this time and time again, I'm telling you, where people have came to me for purging consultation and they really was so shaken up of what somebody did to them. We all have been crossed. We all have been used. We all have been stabbed in the back. And whether this is what you call in your eyes your enemy, enemies, what happens is the purpose of forgiving, and a lot of people don't, I know sometimes the church make it look like you got to forgive, you got to knock at your door, their door and say, hey, forgive me, and it's embarrassing or whatever. It's with them because it don't make any sense. It's, you can holler from the rooftop, forgive me, forgive me. And God, he says he sees the heart. He searches the heart. You understand within, this is why spiritual awakening, spiritual counseling, metaphysics, all of that is dealing with your mind, body, and soul. Everything is affected. Well, Miss P, I don't understand how everything is affected. Oh, yes. When you go to the doctor, I guarantee you, a a metaphysic practitioner will look at the fact that your body is really the manifestation of what you are thinking about or your thoughts, what's going on in your spirit. So a lot of people, sickness actually come from a holistic point of view, come from within. It's your thought patterns. It's what you allow to get in your ear gates, or should I say your five gates senses. So if you don't believe me, just think about your ex, the one that did you wrong. The thought of that person, even though, even if a, a song came on the radio, just imagine how you'd be like, oh my goodness, either you're going to be like, turn it off, turn it off, or it can be deja vu because you miss that person. You see, your spirit, your feelings is picking up everything and then you can go back and reminisce and then you can go ahead and play your your movie in your head and if it's something bad it would trigger something do you understand you are in that hallway with that door still open and your job is you need to do something about it well miss p i don't believe that i'm stuck there yeah, a lot of males, a lot of females are stuck there. That's why they can't go to the to the forward. That's why you see people who married once would never marry again. People who are afraid of marriage, and it could be because what they see their parents went through. You can be triggered by something that prevents you from going forward. And this is why so many people, some of y'all say, I don't believe that. Go to the psychiatrists around the world. It's the reason why they're making so much money because somebody is, is laying down on their couch. Counselors counselors are out there busy, especially since uh, the pandemic. Now we're in a post-pandemic. It's, it's everything. Relationship is not even with the with your loved one or your, your life mate. Some people say soulmate. It, it may not have nothing to do with that. It may, have, it may be your career. Are you stuck in your career? Are you afraid to go to the next level and get and get the mass, your master's degree? Are you afraid to make all kinds of excuses of going and getting your education? Do you specialize in anything or you just say, I'm going to be a one note specialization? And you can, some people can go far with that, but there's nothing wrong. If you can specialize in one thing, link things to it. Learn a little piece of that. I mean, you master that one thing, but then it's always, it's just like a branch. You've got different areas that you can always go through. Well, Miss P, how long am I supposed to do that? You can you do that until it's time for you to expire. Never stop learning. That's a whole nother podcast. With that being said, well, let me give you proof. Genesis 19, 24 to 26. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstones and fires from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew these cities and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of sword. If you know something about your Bible, I suggest you go read that 
that whole story is very heavy. Because if you know something about Solomon and Gomorrah, they just was like, I don't want to say terrible. They just provoked at God anger. And they was doing everything that was against what he said, pretty much the way he, the way we live in now. Let's, let me give you a wisdom from there. Their mind, or should I say their thoughts, wasn't pleasing to God. And of course, you're going to manifest your thoughts. So that's why you see chaos and crime and all of that. You know, people say, I, I don't understand why God let this happen. God said, I'm not going to make you a robot. You're not a robot. You choose between death and life. You choose a mind of death or a mind of life. That's a whole nother, you know, podcast. So with that being said, they was told not to look back as they exit the place. That's that door on the past. You must close that door on the past. And what happened to them? Well, she she never made it. Her husband is Lot. And Lot's wife didn't make it. And this is where a lot of people die. You got to imagine, they were just coming across. And I would think that they was in a hallway of life. And she looked back. You know, hey. And this is going to be any part of your life. You know what I'm trying to say? The spirit is still in your conscious. So you're in a hallway trying to get back. You don't even, Some of y'all don't even see the door in front of y'all. I don't want to meet nobody else. I wanted that person, that person. That's the person that I want. I will not marry anybody. And, then, and if that person died tomorrow, what you going to do? Give up your whole life because of that person? People say these things. People say these things. Listen, in my counseling sessions, I hear these things. I can't live without that person. Really? So you just want God to say, hey, you expire, put an expired um, stamp on your forehead because of one human being. You would be surprised how many people are not teaching their young teenage boy or girl anything in the spiritual realm. You should teach them the good because there's two sides to it. And not the bad. And if you don't teach them at all, I know people who say, I just don't have identify with anything spiritual because they feel like I don't believe in God. And they be standing there and you got this whole open heaven in front of them. And you standing up there, you got the sun, you got the daylight and you looking at them say you don't believe in God. So who do you think did all of this man? Do you understand what I'm saying? People really believe that. And then they wonder why they are teenagers go on rapid. Because they don't understand it's another side to them. And they think, this is it. This is my flesh. I'm going to just jump up out the window because Toby don't love me. Nobody love me. And my, I mean, I just don't understand why I, I meet the same people. Let's go on. This is the reason why when you in that hallway, you can stay in that hallway, but you should be moving forward. Say you in college, you just went to college. Freshman till you get out is going to be a hallway. It's going to be a way where you have to go through. Other words, you must keep moving. God said be fruitful. You got to produce, produce your grades for freshmen. And then, you know, you go to the next one and you go to the next one. And then you might finish and you finish that door of getting your, um, associate degree. I did it like that. I want associate, bachelor's, and whatever. You can do that or go to your, finish the door of your bachelor's and go to the next one. Or you have a specialization. That specialization that you have may be cooking. You turn around and you say, well, you know what? I finished this door, but I want to go to this little door that may say, I want to specialize in the baking part of cooking. Maybe you want to specialize in the vegan part of cooking. Maybe you want to specialize in the healthy part of cooking, nutritional cooking. So do you see how the little branches come out? You close, you go in that door and that hallway may just be those branches that you're trying to complete. With that being said, that is getting you through the door. But when you stuck on relationship or even I put in career, that would really hold you back. This is what people are going through. This is the place where they go and you should seek counsel. I told y'all in my other podcast that it, it was beautiful to know that Kobe Bryant 
uh, the late Kobe Bryant had several coaches. And I'm pretty sure the, you know, the ones that that are great now in athletic field, sports field, had many coaches or they stuck with one coach. What the thing is that they had a coach. So I hear people say, oh, well, I'm just going to go through this by myself. That's when mental illness come in. Then you say, okay, let me go to the doctor who is not really versed in your mental mind. You see, that's why they have a Pacific specialized psychiatrist doctor. But you go to the regular medical, think about that, a family doctor. And he said, oh, wait a minute, we got something for you because that's what they learn. They practice and they go, I'm not going to tell you who they practice on, but uh, they go ahead and they give you, no offense to doctors, but they give you, oh, well, you know what? Let me add this up. Let me see what this, this sounds like you need to go ahead and take this medication and it can pull you. She's depressed. He's depressed. And it can pull you out of your depression. No, it don't pull you out of depression. They don't tell you that one medicine is going to affect different parts of your organs or whatever. And it will affect your mind, body, and soul. See, holistically, mystically, do you understand? That's why I deal with the body, mind, and soul. Is everything within. You start popping pills. That's why young kids, I used to be a substitute teacher. And literally, they went, you know, they was in and out. It was like an excuse now. It's an excuse for some people to get that extra income, I hate to say it, for their child. But then it's also an excuse for you as a mother or father to say, well, I have an off day. I have an off week. It's an excuse for you to go up and bang, bang and shoot everybody in the world that's around you. It's a lot of people walking around and they do not have their mental state of mind, the right mental state of mind. And it, I believe I have nothing against anybody who believe in their doctor and the doctor's giving them this medicine. I always feel medicine is, I agree with medicine to get you through something, but I don't feel like medicine should stay with you once you arrive at these doors. You might be in a hallway and have to go through a medication and then come out. But you have to choose. Do you understand what I'm saying? You will literally find yourself in that hallway. Remember I say your enemies doubt? The longer you stay in the hallway, then you're going to start sleeping in the hallway. Then you're going to find yourself building a little bed in the hallway. And that's, how should I say? Let me go to this. In that hallway, you would meet the same person with a different face. Cheater, beater, or loser. Whether it's a female or a male, this is why people say, I don't understand why I am meeting the same person. Yes, you are still in the hallway. Well, what can I do, Miss P? You can close the door behind you. Miss P, how do I close the door? This is what the forgiveness, I'm going to tell you holistic spiritual forgiveness is not saying what they did to you was all right. If they use you as a punching bag or they use you for your money, it doesn't mean that everything is all right. It means that you are a load. And I'm going to say this, a load of shit. And you got to haul that shit. Excuse my you know what I mean? (laughs) You got to load it out. Think about it. A load, when people get ready to remodel, rehab a house, they got to bring in, they got to bring that truck in to get everything out of there first. And then even though you got people that's a visionary and they can see what everything in there, how they're going to do it. But when you start loading the stuff out, you can start seeing it clearly. That's why your architect he literally, he got everything in his mind, the building, whatever, whatever, whatever. He's doing it and whatever. He can put it on the uh, computer or he can write it. So what I'm trying to say is that hall of junk could imagine if that junk stay in your yard. It starts stinking. Get it? The forgiveness is, and the church don't, don't usually tell you this, is you got to get that. Forgiveness for give. You are giving them their power of mess. Say here, here, here. I'm not picking this up no more. You did what you did. 
I forgive you. I'm giving you back your mess. And if you look at it like that, you will be like, wow. And that way, when you do that, when you bring, when somebody bring up the past or a song on the radio, remind you on podcasts, a song, remind you of somebody who did you so bad, you won't trigger. You won't go crazy. You won't go to the doctor and say, I got to, I got to just have some medication. I got to, because a lot of times it's not medication that you need. A lot of times your kids don't need medication. It's the fact that they in the hallway, like their mother and father's in the hallway. I know that hurt. I know that hurt it. I I, I want to, uh, okay, I'm sorry. Let's take a deep breath. The other thing is you walk around, I mean, you know, you in regret, you in hatred mode. How do you know everything triggers you? Then you go into a, oh, I, you know, I can't take it. And well, what is that coming from? Because what happened is your mind is picking up what happened in the past. But why is your body literally going crazy? Spiritual, mind, body, and soul. Why is the past dictating whether you go through the next door in the future, which is your promised land? It is doing it because everything is connected. Well, Miss P, I got it. So you do understand you got to get out that hallway, get somebody who's going to con- who's going to counsel you out, who's going to walk you through those doors. You can always contact me, get people that's um you don't want to face nobody. You don't want to go nowhere and let the person see you. You shame. Listen, phone consultation works brilliant. I do it. You can do Zoom. Whatever that you choose to do, nobody have to know. But it's all right to have a coach or counselor or whatever, like the late Kobe Bryant, for different parts of your life. Finances. Your finances. Well, I didn't talk about that. Your relationship with your finance could be, I'm stuck in the hallway. I just can't save $5. I'm stuck in the hallway. I want to have ownership, but I, I just keep renting apartments. I am stuck in a hallway. I want a relationship, but I keep meeting the same person. I'm stuck in a hallway. I can't get past high school. I don't even, I dropped out of high school. I know I can get my GED, but I'm stuck. You know why? Because I'm talking to the enemies of life, doubt, delay, and it's coming through people. I'm listening to them. Let's forget talking to them. You're listening to them. In that hallway, I told you it can be good or bad. It can be somebody saying, hey, come on, come on, let's get past the crowd. Like say you in the church, you can't get in. You can't, even even if you at a concert and somebody come and get you and say, hey, I got another way to go in and they come and bring you through the back. That's divine connection. You see how I gave you that little wisdom right there? See, once you go ahead and you give it all to God, you will forgive. You give you all that junk that's there. You go to God and you put all your junk at his feet. That's what he's saying. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You give it to him and he will give you divine connection. See, they'll teach you that. I don't, they don't really think most people in the church, pastors and of really teaching you spiritual leaders, but you have to understand it's a certain way, reason that you afford give. It's a certain reason why you are you getting a spiritual coach. Going to school, Sunday school is not going to make it. Going to church just every Sunday and Wednesday is not going to make it. You need somebody that specifically is going to walk you through. I'm not saying that if you have a pastor, priest, or whatever. With that being said, you need somebody who's going to specialize and help you with what you need help with. If you stay stuck in the hallway, what happens? You will never make it to your promised land. And this is why Miles, the late Miles Moreau said, the most intelligent people, I don't want to say intelligent people, but people who had a lot of gift are sitting in the graveyard. Should we say maybe that's the hallway between this rim and heaven? Hello? Did y'all, somebody get that? Contact me. I can help you. I can help you. I can help you get out of the hallway. And just remember, I kind of 
feel somebody in, is literally wanting to know this. Are there many hallways? Is it a positive going through a hallway? I just told y'all that. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But you must be moving. It's just like the escalator that's flat and you going when you're in the airport. You must be moving. Yes, you're going to meet these people in a way, the enemy of the mind, and you must keep on moving. But that's why you focus on what's in front of you. Keep turning it to the left and to the right. You're going to the past and to the future. I hope this helps somebody. I'm pretty, listen, if it's one person that it helped, that person can go back and that person can help a hundred and that that five out of a hundred can help a thousand and that 10 out of a thousand can help a million. And then that, that, that 100 out of a million can literally go for, should I say a thousand out of a million can go and just give it to the next generation. So when you feel that you just help one person and you say, I want to help everybody, that one person can be a connection, a divine connection to literally help so many people. I am going to continue this and I'm going to go to part two. Only reason why I'm going to do that is because this is heavy. We got to get you out the hallway. You understand? I just thank you. Now, go get your promised land. Thank you for coming into my space. We are going to just talk about, you know, what you need to do with the book. We are going forward, me and my family, with so much beautiful things happening. Manifestation. Clients are manifesting a lot of stuff. And what's new is I got to finish this other book. So y'all need to keep me in prayer. I have been so busy with so many things. With that being said, what I want you to do is remember if loving yourself is right, you don't want to be wrong.